G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School and the Learn to Paint Club. Welcome to this week's Learn to Paint Club project. Now today we've got an exciting little project for you. Uh, I was driving, oh, where was it, in the hinterland here in Queensland, about 20 minutes from where I live, and um, going to a place called Kenilworth, which is a beautiful part of the world. And um, through the trees, I, I caught a glimpse of the Kenilworth Bluff. It's a big mountain range with rocky outcrops. And um, it was late in the day, so it was sort of shadowy with light hitting on it. And I thought, wow, that would make a really interesting painting. So I came home and did this quick little sketch. Uh, this took me you know, half an hour to do. And I thought today's project, we'd do this a bit bigger. I'm going to do a slightly different format. But we would expand on this and um, use this as a bit of a reference and, and try and do a better painting than this. Because I think it's a good little landscape subject with some light hitting and so on. So that's what we're going to do today. It's going to be an exciting project, of course. You're going to enjoy it. Now, we're going to start off as we always do with the more method of painting. Three steps. We're going to start off with step number one, which is to draw in our big shapes. So, I'm going to use acrylics. Um, as you know, I'm alone to paint club projects. We're either going to use acrylics or we're going to use oils. So today we'll use acrylics. And I'm using the Artelia Interactive, which I find to be a really great brand. And I'm just painting here on 12 by 16 canvas. So nothing too big. Um, treat these projects as just a learning exercise for you. And, uh, you know, if you keep the canvas a reasonable size, then the projects um, will be easy to do. And um, you'll get through more projects, get more practice, and, and you'll, um, you'll learn a lot quicker. Okay, so what I've done, I've put out ultramarine blue. We'll just run through the colours. So we're going to use ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre. They're our three primary colours, okay? We use those as the sort of the foundation of everything we do, a blue, a yellow, and a red. Ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson. And I'll add a bit of cadmium yellow, medium, and we, of course, use titanium white as well. I've just got this scruffy old fan brush. Um, it really is pretty scruffy. synthetic for this type of thing and, we, and our goal here now we're in step two of the more method our goal is just to block in color we're going to get the sky in we want to get the mountain range in we're blocking some darks and um, some cooler darks and some warmer darks okay so that's what we're focusing in on here so we're going to set the tone the value structure overall based on our center of interest which is going to be where the light hits on the bluff here okay so um, we're going to take Chunk of red, a uh, chunk of ultramarine blue, a little bit of white in there, and a pinhead, like literally a pinhead, right? Pinhead of red and a pinhead of yellow. Why are we putting the red and yellow in there? Just to grey it off. Start off with the sky, we take a big chunk of the white, 
Now, this is still going to be wet in here. Um, if you want, you can pause and leave it and then come back to that. Up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some yellow and some red. Mix up a nice glow, an orangey glow. Like so. That's like a peachy sort of glow. And I want to get that into the... Uh, lower part of the sky so because it's late afternoon sun's sort of setting off in the distance um, i want to create that effect in the sky lots of paint for this right don't be stingy on the paint otherwise you won't be able to blend people have problems with blending in acrylics it's usually because they put a little thin layer of paint and um, guess what happens with a thin layer of acrylic paint? It dries quickly. <laughs> so there's no time to blend. So I put a lot of paint up there. Just a little bit around this side here. Now it's still all wet in here. So that's perfect. It just allows us to blur some edges there. Okay. And then what we want to do, I'll, I'll leave that on there on the brush, but I'll get another chunk of white and I'll get some blue in there. Get a bit more. Okay. Now it's got to be a lot lighter than obviously what we've done for the bluff. So we've got a nice pastel tone up in the sky there. Beautiful. That, that way our tree here is going to pop out. Work around that foliage. Okay. And then just because I've got lots of paint there, I can just blend the two back and forward. Introduce some of that blue a bit lower. Beautiful. Oh, a little bit too much there. Okay. See, I've got a little bit too much there. I'll just work that until softens out. I don't want any hardness in the sky at all. I want a nice soft pastel -y sky. With a glow happening around it, which is what we're getting there. Very nice. Hope you're enjoying this painting. I'm certainly enjoying creating it for you. Softening out, leaving that bit there glowing as much as I can. Stand back and have a bit of a look. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that overall. Okay. Well, that brings us pretty much to the end of step two. We've got blocked in colour, which is what our goal is, blocked in all of our big shapes. And we've got our tones right, most importantly, right? We've got our or our values right. So we've got a nice light sky. Then we've got the Kenilworth Bluff is the you know, darker than the sky, obviously. Then we've got our shadows for our bush and our foliage. Darker again, so it's bringing it forward. And then we've got our warm dark in the foreground, which again creates another layer. So we've got one, two, three, four layers. Usually with landscape, you can get four to six layers in there that you can create a nice amount of depth. Um, but we could still create some extra layers in amongst this, this foliage here just with our highlighting. So that's no problem. So... Have a go at that, get yourself up to that step, step two, um, then let it dry off before going on to step three. So pause the video, get yourself to that point, and then let it dry off. Go and have a cup of tea for half an hour to an hour. Um, if you're using oils, then you might want to leave it overnight just to let it fully dry so we can apply our highlight colors on nice and easily. Uh, so I'll see you in step three. Pause the video, go and do this, and I'll see you in step three.
So what I think we'll do now is I think we'll do just a little bit of the rock face on the bluff. Um, so we're just subtly putting in a little bit of tone there, not too much, a little bit of colour, I mean, just into there. And it's that pinky colour in the sky, right, but not as light. That's an orangey, earthy, rocky colour. So, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, titanium white. It's probably around about that time. Tricky part of this is because that colour is now dried darker, I've got to guess a little bit here. And again, this is going to be a dry brush technique. So, clean your brush out, pull it through a little bit of paint on the end. And then the rocky escarpment, don't lose all the blue. Right? You can see that's probably too much paint on my brush. Too clunky. And also, I think that's probably too bright a tone as well. It needs to be a lot grey, more greyed off than that. That's okay. Sometimes you've got to put it up there to See how it's going to work. And all I'm doing is just pulling that brush down in vertical strokes and then across the tops, a little bit of a horizontal Stroke. There you go, and that looks like the sun's now catching, when I stand back and have a look from a distance, it looks like the sun's now catching the top of that um, cliff face there, and just making it all glow, which is the effect that we want. Get a little bit through here. Get some of this green, okay, and I'll just run in a few spots back on top and down into into it there. Just blew that off a little. Green's got to be quite greyed down though and understated because we don't want to compete with the foliage. It's got to sit back. So I'm probably wanting to get some of this blue. You know, it's dry. I'll pick up a little bit there and just soften some of that green back in. Knock back some of those highlights that are a bit too bright. And then we could be good to go with that for the moment. Um, don't overdo this sort of highlight foliage in the distance. It's really just got a last bit of sun's catching there. It's the end of the day, a little bit of sun catching at the end on there. Okay. So let's now start to add a little bit of zing now to some of these tree top, oh, these tree branches, and um, put a bit of sunshine on those with some white. So I'm going to use the same colour as in the sky there, and the same as we used in the uh, highlights of the rocks. Okay, so this is really highlighting now. Yeah, that's quite a, a bright, sorry, a, a deep dark colour. 
through our mellow. There we go, that's good in there. Okay, so this is just where got a lot of paint there. Don't don't have too much on the brush. <laughs> Hang every bush and every twig in it, and it's just a feel of it, right? So I'm just waving that um, palette knife around, pushing those rocks back a bit, and uh, you know, I'm looking at it from a distance, and it's working pretty well, I think. Let's get a have a mix of that. Some more earthy tones in there now. And we'll just fashion some of those in there. Now I've probably lost my dark corners a little bit. That's okay. It's always good to have dark corners that sort of pulls the eye in to the painting. The reason why I say it's okay is because I can easily add some more darks in there. In fact, let's do that now. And then we're getting close to concluding this painting. It's not a difficult painting to do. It just requires thinking through the steps, which we've done. Being a bit patient with it. So go on just a little bit abstracty in the foreground there. Which I uh, kind of like, I mean, I've been leaning more towards the abstract over time. <laughs> and um, you know, for these um, Learn to Paint Club um, projects, we will explore some slightly more abstract things in the future, just for interest's sake. One of the artists I've been you know, getting into and really enjoy his work is a guy called Dennis Sheehan, American guy. He's an American tonalist artist. And I really like his approach, so I can do some along the lines of what he's doing as well. In the future, now a couple of little touch-ups. I'll just clean my palette, knife, a couple of little touch-ups and then we're done. some of these highlights a little. Mm. 
just to pull them out a bit more. Well, I think we finished this one. This is Kenilworth Bluff, a um, little view that I saw from the road as I was driving by. I think it's quite a good little project. It was a little bit of an abstract bush scene, but it, I think it works well. Definitely worth having a try. Let me know how you go. Post your comments below or questions, and uh, I look forward to seeing your version of it. See you next time. Cheers.